Okay, I want to talk about uh, Stranger Things and the uh, German-produced series Dark. Now, the two have been compared uh, because there are some similarities here in that they're both these uh, towns where something very weird is happening. Um, and both uh, involve uh, the 80s in some form or fashion, even though uh, Dark begins actually in the future, a couple of years in the future from now. <laughs> and so, uh, but then it spans over time. Uh, well, by now, I'm, a, I'm not going to spoil everything, and this is just an overview. And I'm not going to get into the details of plot and what have you, but essentially with Stranger Things, you have this business of government experiments on uh, psychics and this psychic girl who, uh, uh, who opened a doorway to another dimension, uh, and uh, terrible things happen as a result. In Dark, uh, you have uh, a nuclear power plant and some sort of event that resulted in a wormhole opening up uh, in this cave in the center. Uh, the, well, maybe not in the center. I forget where exactly. But in the woods in this uh, town. And it opens up doorways to other parts of time. And this causes a series of events. It creates the whole show and all kinds of things are messed up. Uh, so there you go. That's the magic or the uh, sci-fi elements of both shows that gives them their weirdness. Uh, Stranger Things, of course, comes across primarily as a tribute to uh, Steven Spielberg's approach to children in his movies of the uh, late 70s and early 80s. And it does capture that fairly well. And you can relive that in some of the aspects of the 80s. Since I was one of those kids of the 80s, <laughs> uh, they get right. Others, uh, it's too much of today's linguistics and what have you. But that's going to happen. Uh, no one's ever going to be able to capture uh, time quite that way. As good as Mad Men was, uh, there was problems there every now and then. But they were minor. And it doesn't take you out of the show uh, that kind of thing, so you're able to enjoy uh, the plot and what have you. Uh, the first season of Stranger Things uh, it w was better than the second one, only in that the second one is basically a repeat of the first one. Uh, different things are going on, and you're learning a few more things about the mysterious girl in it and all this sort of thing, and uh, that's fine, but uh, repetition is a dangerous thing for a series, especially in these competitive times. And as I've said in previous videos, uh, that's what killed Walking Dead. As far as I'm concerned, it was a fabulous show, and now it's not. <laughs> it's slowly just rotting like a zombie. <laughs> and soon won't be able to move anymore because it just repeats things over and over again. And what's the point? Uh, so I'm hoping there's more to. They need to kind of jump to a different direction and not do a repeat in the third season. Uh, so, but overall, a good show. It's, it's deserved the following it's got and uh, some of the acclaim. And uh, that's all fine and, and well. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Netflix also uh, has Dark, which is uh, German. And, uh, of course, the, the real drawback, uh, if you don't speak German, and I don't, it means you have to read the movie. Uh, that's always a drawback with these uh, uh, different language movies. Uh, but uh, it's so damn good, it doesn't matter. I'm willing to plow through that and enjoy the story. This is one of these shows. That, uh, in the early 2000s is when we had this golden age of television uh, began uh, with shows that uh, competed with uh, top-notch movies to where the, the movies started to look weak in comparison. So you had, uh, of course, with the premium cable channels, with The Sopranos being probably the ultimate and for other people like Dexter and stuff like that. But then uh, the broadcast networks had 24, uh, the early series, uh, seasons of that. It, 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 again, dwindled down and ran too long and probably should have ended much earlier. By the time you got to its final season, it was just awful. Uh, they came back with a reunion season, which was pretty good, but uh, it, it, it's done. Uh, then the other one, the great one, was Lost. And Lost, uh, a lot of people say, oh, it's not rewatchable anymore because I know how it ends. No, there's so much uh, layers and different ideas and stuff that you can explore through that series beyond its core plot and what have you uh, that makes it just an amazing uh, exercise in writing and uh, performances and whatnot. 
And uh, boy, did I have serious withdrawals after that show was over. And yes, uh, yeah, the, the ending is somewhat uh, lackluster. Uh, but then again, I don't know how they could have ended it. <laughs> of course, I have my own headcanon ideas, but uh, that doesn't matter. Even that, I don't think would have been all that satisfying. And uh, more times than not, it's the pursuit, not the uh, the victory or, <laughs> or having <laughs> that's uh, all that satisfying. So... Uh, but after Lost, oh boy, I wanted another Lost, and there was people trying to make a new Lost, and they were all pretty awful. Walking Dead kind of f fulfilled that for a while, and like I said, it's gone off the, the rails and probably should have ended some time ago. So uh, that leaves newer shows out there uh, that are interesting and cool. Leftovers was pretty good. Uh, and, uh, which, oh, I haven't actually finished that one. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so far so good is for what I've seen. Uh, and so, uh, now, uh, uh, here we have, uh, Stranger Things, which again, like I said, was the tribute to the Steven Spielberg ideal. And I think they do a better job of that than, uh, J.J. Abrams, uh, uh, Super 8 movie, which was just kind of the same idea of trying to capture that. Uh, uh, presentation that Spielberg was able to do so well for his movies uh, in those time, primarily, you know, uh, E.T. and that sort of thing. Uh, uh, but Dark, of course, uh, where the, the kids are more the dominant characters in the series, Dark, uh, kids do play a role and a very important role, but adults, it, it is more of the adult show, and the adults have more impact even though, like I said, there's time travel involved, and so you see the different age and versions of these characters uh, all interlinking, and sometimes it's very difficult to keep up <laughs> with who's who, but eventually you figure it out. Uh, and it's just a fascinating uh, take on it. And of course, uh, the title, pretty minimalist, but then again, it does capture it, as they're always in this pretty dreary <laughs> surroundings. It's, it seems like it's always raining uh, in this town. And so, uh, yeah, it, it is an appropriate title, <laughs> but uh, it it's just so well done, so layered that you can see the work done. It is leaps and bounds superior to uh, Stranger Things in a lot of ways. And uh, again, of course, uh, it's adult, so it's more sensible, more, uh, like I said, depth of the story, uh, the emotion that comes from the performances, the characters that develop, and you can understand why they got the way they are. There's background to them, and it's all well handled. It's not wasted. Uh, they don't dwell on things too long. It's just right, you know, right on time with each moment, and they pull that off within one season. Uh, and so it's just amazing. And again, I wish I could speak German so I wouldn't have to read because <laughs> I want to see the visual, you know, at the same time. Uh, and so in, in the way it ends, uh, and of course, you oh, damn, oh, got to see the next one. You know? And that's what you want with something like this. And uh, the only trepidation is, man, I just hope if there's if the next season would would ruin it, I, I would rather it not happen at all. <laughs> but of course, I want more, and I'm hoping that they've got an end game in mind, uh, similar to what the guys from Lost did. They may not have liked how it ended, but it's better than not having an ending like uh, Walking Dead, which actually did have an ending. But Kirkman decided to abandon it so he could milk that cow. Uh, don't do that with one of these great works here. And uh, Dark is really special, and I do highly recommend it. Stranger Things is fun and good, but I'm worried about the repetition that's already seeped in uh, to it. Uh, but the performances within uh, Dark uh, uh, are superior to what you're seeing in, in Stranger Things as well. So... Uh, four out of five stars for Stranger Things, and this is like an overview uh, of the series. So as a whole, a Stranger Things has two seasons already, whereas Dark only has one, and it could be the next season of Dark is terrible, <laughs> which would undermine his score. But, you know, I've just finished this and gotten into these shows, so uh, the overall overview of the two, uh, obviously... Uh, the way I'm reading it is that uh, Dark would get uh, the five out of five stars for this edition of the Nelson rating. So I do recommend it. Both shows, of course, are on Netflix. And uh, do yourself a favor and check out uh, Stranger Things and, and of course, Dark uh, uh, to treat yourself through some worlds 
of wonder. Now, please do look into uh, the link description below for my stores, my t-shirt store at the Mr. Nelson store at uh, Zazzle.com, and then my poor man mystery science theater treatment of old public domain movies that uh, are featured with my smart aleck comments and uh, cartoon sound effects and all that good stuff and inappropriate laugh tracks. <laughs> And uh, they're dirt cheap. Please uh, check those out. And it supports this channel as well as my podcast, which you can also check out for free uh, at RadioMisfits.com. New episodes every Wednesday and Saturday. Yes, you would be greatly appreciated for checking those out. All that and more in the link description below. So, again, thanks for listening and watching this channel. And please do subscribe because there's more to come. And once again, thank you for your time.